Hi, today I would like to talk about my latest sad experience with my phone. It is one of the famous models from the Samsung and from the Fold series, specifically Galaxy Z Fold 4. First of all, I would like to say that I really enjoyed the Fold 4. Compared to usual slab phones, it has two screens. One of them is the front screen, which you usually use it for the phone functionality, like for calling someone or writing a message. And it is, as name points out, foldable and has another bigger screen inside of it. I bought it around a year ago in Europe and some success it will provide two years of warranty for this product, which was the second selling point for me after the bigger screen of course. I never used it in any extreme environments like during very cold or warm temperatures or in dusty places. And because of it, you can probably tell just by looking at the video, it did not wear out. And the phone is pretty decent, I should say. How I use it is usually I use the front screen for the most apps and it is quite responsive and you have all the goodies which comes with the Android operating system. Apart from using it as a regular phone, I use it for reading books and other PDF files, like datasheets. Of course, you can do all those things with almost all Android phones without an issue, but you would most of the time want something like a tablet. However, yesterday I encountered this issue. I saw a black line in the middle of the screen and also touch screen stopped working. All happened quite fast and basically I left with a screen which is not usable. It's not happened because of any user mistake, I would say, and happened because of the wear and tear which is a result of the intended use. The screen is not responsive to any touch at all, and it is not like a damage which would let you use the phone with some missing functionality, it is something which prevents you to use the main screen. Which is, I think, the main reason why most people are hesitant to buy this phone. To be honest, I was also expecting a damage like that in the future. But since it was from a reputable brand like Samsung, I assumed they did their homework and the bendable screen technology is ready to use for the consumers. I think it's pretty easy to demonstrate the damage with a similar material like the screen. Because even though the screen material is a little bit different than the plastic that I am holding, the stress which is concentrated in the middle will be the same. Imagine this plastic piece is the inner screen. You are folding it like it is demonstrated in the advertisements. If the bending radius is low, the stress in the middle section won't be that high either. Therefore, there will be no lasting damage in the middle section. However, if you apply more force by bending it more, it will behave differently. The material will go through the plastic deformation and the material won't be able to go its previous shape. In physics, it's called plasticity or plastic deformation. So if you want more theoretical knowledge, you can check the Wikipedia article. Basically, in the first example, you are applying force, but the material is able to go back to its original shape. But after going through the point two, the damage which has been done on the material is not reversible. And if you continue applying force, then the material will eventually break. To prevent or at least to slow down this effect, they put some gap in the phone. The mechanical design does not allow you to bend the screen entirely. This also helps to prevent the damage from the solid particles which might get stuck inside of the phone, like sand or something. After continuous usage, however, the screen will continue this deformation only with a slow pace. Therefore, it is not a matter of how, but a matter of when. If you continue using your phone as intended, by that I mean folding and unfolding the phone, the damage will build up. And eventually this movement will damage the screen, like the way which I am demonstrating with a plastic piece. The only difference is it takes more time than the plastic piece. However, the fate will be the same. Eventually the screen will break up, like these two pieces. There is at least one sign that gives you a warning before the permanent damage. The original phone comes with a plastic screen protector. So two days ago, the plastic screen protector started peeling off from the top of the phone and on the same day it continued expanding through the middle screen. 
I think the purpose of the screen protector is not only protecting the screen from the fall damage or damage from the solid particles which might get stuck in the middle, but also it is supporting the screen for this damage which I showed you previously. So if you already have one, the best advice that I can give you is go to the official Samsung repair store and get the screen protector replaced immediately which might prevent instant screen failure if you are lucky. On my case, however, this all happened so fast that this advice was not applicable. I am skeptical about the usefulness of this advice, but this is another matter, I guess. I will go to the Samsung official repair store to see if they can help me with this issue. After buying this phone, a year and two months has been passed and the phone is still under warranty. Because in Europe, Samsung promises two years of factory warranty. Hopefully, they can help me to replace the screen. This type of issues are the exact reason for a consumer to trust a brand or losing the trust that they have. I will come back tomorrow and give my report to you. A few moments later. So I returned from the Samsung repair center and they rejected my warranty claim. They said it was a user mistake. And obviously I did not agree to their reasoning and escalated it. However, my claim is again rejected by three other engineers. Please share what you think of this decision by Samsung Repair Center. I am really curious about your opinions as well. I can't really remember the exact amount, but the repair cost that they quoted to me was around 600 euros. So they are basically telling you to buy a new phone. And plus, the circle here happened during their inspection. I expect it to worsen soon as well. It is indeed sad news for me, and not just because of the Samsung not honoring their warranty, but also how some basic engineering concepts are not being respected during the development cycle. Especially reliability and maintainability engineering concepts are disregarded. In industrial design, still, they are respected of course. The purpose of the reliability and maintainability engineering is to influence the system design in order to increase the mission capability and availability, plus of course decreasing to logistic burden and also cost of over a system's life cycle. This sounds pretty flashy, however it's mainly about making the parts which are not reliable in terms of quality more replaceable in case of they stop functioning like when introducing a new technology or in case you have a part which fails often. You simply try to make these parts as cheap as possible to replace to offer best user experience. And you can watch other YouTube videos about how to replace the inner screen and it is really painful and time consuming. I replaced phone screens in the past, but let me tell you, replacing the inner screen is not easy on this phone. And you might be okay for replacing the screen, you know, maybe you got the skills and you know how to do, let's say, really tiny bit of work. Still, for example, I am looking at the AliExpress here. There is no any screens which is manufactured by the other Chinese company. All they have are the previous broken screens. For example, all the screens here have some sort of damage on them. So yeah, you might think you might be okay if you have just one black blob on the middle or here, whatever, but that's not the issue. Probably these screens got damaged in the past and if you just do the, all the hard work and replace the screens using this by paying this much money, then you'll see the same faulty issue again. You know, this blob will start increasing to either side of the screen as well. If you are curious about how to replace the inner screen, first you need to open your phone of course. And first thing you need to do is removing the bezels on the screen here. Then you need to carefully try to separate the screen and the phone body by removing the glue in between. Afterwards you need to do the same on the back panel. And this is not the only thing, you need to also remove the front screen as well. Because all the connectors of the inner screens are located behind the front panel on the back side of the front panel and also behind the back of the phone. And the hardest part is you may damage existing flex PCBs while doing so. Sorry if all this sounded like a ranting video, but I wanted everyone to know these issues before buying any foldable phone. 
I think all these issues are not only relevant to Samsung, apart from not respecting the air warranty of course, but it is relevant to all foldable phone manufacturers, regardless of the brand. So if you are still not sure whether to buy or not to buy a foldable phone, you should better keep these issues in mind. If you really want a foldable phone, I would recommend you to buy an insurance with it for the screen as well. Samsung also sells this type of insurances, plus other insurance companies provide similar coverages as well. I learned my lesson the hard way and I won't be buying any foldable phone soon. If you have any phone recommendations for me, please let me know down in the description. What I am looking for is a reliable Android phone with a widescreen and if it has cheap replacement parts, in case something goes wrong, it would be better. If you like this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up and see you next time.